Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm gonna be continuing my uh, series of re animating in React. So today I will be doing another type of animation using React Spring. And this time I will be building a carousel-like um, implementation using uh, a rotate animation and um, yeah that should be pretty cool so let's uh, get started so here I have my app and it's uh, as you can see very simple we're rendering a div right now we are importing some basic CSS and uh, I'm just gonna quickly explain this CSS so we're gonna have a slider div that just takes up the whole width, is a flex container and uh, the entire height of the document and then some overflow hidden. So everything overflowing our slider will not be shown. And then for the slider items, I put flex string to zero. So uh, the width we put here, which is 100%, will get lowered. So make sure our item fills out the whole page. In other words, we're showing one item at a time in our carousel. And then just some padding and some flex property here to style it a little bit. And then for the image that will be inside our slider item, I just put the width to 50%. And then object fit cover to make it look better, basically. And then some box sizing down here, border box on everything just so we don't get any weirdness with marking and padding. It shouldn't be the case for the elements we're using, but you know, just in case, it's a good practice. So let's close that one and jump back to app.js and uh, open up data.js just quickly. Here are the three images we're gonna be using in our slider. I put them in a separate file because these URLs are pretty long. And uh, here I just export it default and uh, in app.js, I'm importing the data here, okay? Right, next step is to add React Spring. And uh, in addition to that, we will also add another package, which will be React Use Gesture. And um, the reason for adding this package is that we're gonna be doing some dragging and uh, dragging stuff in uh, JavaScript in React is like a very, how do you say, common thing to do. It has been implemented million of time, million of times, and this React use gesture um, is just very nice because it's using a hook based approach and fits really well with React Spring, which is also using hooks. All right. So after adding those two libraries, we can close this one. And um, yeah, let's get started on the app. So let's start out by rendering our three images here. So inside our div here, we can add a class name of slider, and then we can loop over our different items. So data, we can map here, take an element, and then render out a div, okay? And this div, we can add a class name of slider item. And inside this div, we will have the image. And the source of this image will be the element up here. Okay. And uh, that should be all for the image. I'm just going to add, add an alt attribute here as well, just to avoid the warning we get from React. Okay. That's very simple, that should be good. Uh, maybe add a key here, just for good measure. And we can use L as key. Now let's check Chrome to see if everything looks cool. Okay, that looks okay. We have one slide item here. And since we have overview hidden, 
uh, also hidden, sorry, on the container, we cannot scroll. We can just see this one image filling up the whole width. And since we put flex shrink zero, uh, it will stay at width 100%. Okay, that's good. Now let's jump back here. Okay, that's good. Um, all right, it's time to write some animation logic. Okay, so I'm going to be adding some state here. So the first one will be animating. And the reason why we need this uh, variable is because we're going to reach a breakpoint as we drag our image. And upon reaching a specific breakpoint, we want to fire off the animation and then freeze all animation as this is happening. So we need some kind of state to uh, say when the animation is running. Okay, so since we're using the use state hook, we need to make sure we also import it up here. That is the first type of state we need. So the next one will be the React Spring. So let's do use Spring from React Spring. All right, and um, let's define it. So I'm gonna be using the per the recommended way of doing it, which is destructuring an array. All right, and then grabbing the value and the set function here. Okay, and use spring. I will return a function, and this function will return an object in line. And I'm going to be returning a value x, and this value x is going to be an array with two values. So as you can see here, I destruct out this x so I can um, use it down here in my markup a little easier. Okay, that is our spring. So now, since we have our spring in place, we need to make sure that the stuff down here we are animating needs to have the animated in front. So here we're animating the div, so I need to put animated.div here and make sure we import it. Okay, let's see if everything looks normal. Everything looks okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Now, so far we just added a spring. We didn't really add anything else. Remember, at the beginning, I also added this use gesture package. Now, let's add that hook called use drag from that package. So import use drag from react use gesture. And then let's start running the logic for the drag. So it's using the hook, hook syntax as explained. So let's just call this variable bind and then call use drag. Okay. And use drag has a handler here. And this handler has a bunch of properties a bunch but we are just going to be using one and that will be movement so we're going to destruct all that movement and i'm interested specifically in the first value of the array which will be uh, the um, coordinates on the x-axis all right let's destructure that one out now in here we need to be doing some some calculations okay so since we're doing a rotation we want to basically transform and then do translate 3d where we change the um, x-axis so that will be the first value, and then we want to do a rotation. All right. So first, let's figure out how much of 
how much we moved across the screen when we move our mouse. So let's define a variable called move x. And here we can take mx and then divide by the width of the window times 100. This should give how many percentage we moved so far across the screen. Okay. Now, if we go down here and call set, we can do set here and then pass in. Oh, sorry. We need to specify what we are setting. So we are updating the x here and then our two values. So I didn't explain quite yet why I have two values in here. And that is simply because we want to update how much we want to rotate, but also how much we want to move along the x-axis. So that's why we have two values. So let's just uh, update the first one now, which will be move x and then keep this one as zero. Okay. Now, this code seems pretty simple, right? And it is. So let's actually go down here to our slider and make this one. Um, yeah, let's add the drag functionality to the slider, okay? So when we start pressing down the keys and starts to drag stuff around, it will um, work anywhere the mouse is on the screen. So on our slider, we can call, actually we can destruct, or actually spread our bind variable here and then call it. This will enable the drag functionality for the slider and everything below it. Okay. Now where that is in place, we also need to add this x value, animated value up here, the x to our animated div. So let's do that. We remember from the previous videos that we always need to add this animated value to the style of the animated element. Okay, so in here we want to pass an object and we want to be train, we want to be transforming stuff. So let's do transform and then x is x and then we want to interpolate that value. Okay, let's just add a value here. And now we need to output that transformation string. So as I said, we want to first translate 3D and we want to go along the X axis. So we can do value, px, 0, px, 0, px. Let's see if this very quick example is working. Now, if I hold down the mouse here, not much seems to be going on right now. But maybe that is because we forgot to add the animated to our slider. So let's try to do that. So I couldn't figure out what the error was initially, but it seems like we're missing a comma over here, uh, which is the reason why it wasn't moving. So if we save that and then start dragging here and move our cursor, we can see that the image is actually moving and it's updating up here. And uh, in fact, all of these images are updating as I'm moving. Okay, so that's that's working. Okay. Now this was uh, part one. Uh, watch part two for um, seeing the uh, the final uh, implementation of the animation and how we will end up doing the rotation and things like that. Right. Thank you for watching this first part and.